righty, Becky and I are back. We've had a great um, jumping session. Uh, good workout, hard workout. Um, and it's quite warm today. So normally, um, in this video, I would like to show you guys our like post-workout session. And on a normal day, we would definitely always recommend stretching before you cool off your horse because now the muscles are nice and warm and the blood circulating. It just reduces the risk of any kind of injury um, uh, while doing stretches. So, um, but it was really hot today um, and he got really hot. So you've got to kind of just play it by ear and just um, change it up when you need to. So when your horses get a little hot, if you're in hot and humid climates, it's definitely the priority is to cool them down. So when we come in, we've always got a water bucket in the wash rack and the first thing we do is take the bridle off and lead them to the water. Bucky's already had a drink so I don't know if he will humor me and take a sip but that was the first thing I did. I brought him in, I let him have a drink here and then what I did, he's waiting for his carrots because he knows his stretches are coming um, and then I hosed him off. Now when your horse is hot, like we were a little bit, we had cameras all over the place so we didn't kind of film that because the camera was still outside, but we will catch that and we will make sure we'll bring out a video on that specifically, how to cool off the hot horse. Um, so what I did is I had just cold water, I hosed him down. You wanna make sure you get um, those areas where the veins are close to the surface, so make sure you get between their legs, their stomach, their head, very important to cool them off. And because he was still breathing a bit hard, I popped him in the walker for about 10 minutes. So that, that's where we're at now. We've done our walker, we're breathing normally, and he's still warm enough to safely do his stretches, um, but I don't have to worry about him overheating. Hey, Becky. Okay, so we've got our carrots um, for the infamous carrot stretches, and that's what he's waiting for. And here at RCR, we like to do three stretches. They're relatively safe stretches to do, I would say. Um, and I've definitely noticed a difference in the horses when we do them regularly, their range of motion, um, their flexibility. And horses' muscle fibers react, from what I've learned, a little bit differently. So whereas in a human, you would have to hold a stretch a lot longer for approximately 90 seconds for those muscle fibers to start releasing. In horses, they actually start releasing after five seconds, and then you never want to hold a stretch longer than 20 seconds in the horse. So what we always recommend is we shoot for around the 10 second mark. You know, you're getting a good release, and in case your counting's a little bit off, you've got, kind of got a bit of a safe space both ways. Good job, sometimes you'll hear clicking like that and they'll give themselves a nice adjustment. So the first stretch is to the point of the shoulder and just so they can learn what's coming, I like to tap on the shoulder just with my other finger and then I lead the carrot to here. You wanna make sure it's at the point so you get a stretch along the top line here so they're kind of stretching their neck up like this. Gotta still keep count, good boy. And Bucky's quite polite about his stretches. Of course you are, hey. Um, but they are horses that like to nip your fingers, so just a recommendation, watch out. Make sure you're kind of holding those horses, you want to hold your fingers away, so that if they do snatch the carrot, you're not holding it like this, because your finger is going to become a casualty. And then sometimes just moving the carrot around, like, so they can't quite get it, keeps them there, and your finger's safe. Okay, the next one, I tap the carpal joint and then you want to start, you bring their nose down to the carpal joint and you go directly out like perpendicular to the leg in that same height. You want to stay in that height and just see how far you can go. Bucky's used to his stretches, he's pretty flexible. Good boy. And um, in a horse that's not, you might have to build it up to that. And a horse that can't hold a stretch, like never force a stretch. So, because then you'll get the opposite effect and that muscle's gonna get tense and it's actually gonna tighten up instead of release. So if you had a horse that's not quite as flexible and we'll pull some of the other ones out so you can see a comparison, then you just 
baby steps and you only hold it. If you can get to five, that's great. And then just kind of work on it and see it as a process and don't try and get the full stretch on the first day. The next one, let me turn them sideways so you guys can see better. I know, I know, doing it a little bit different. Okay. So the next one, I tap on the hip up here and I want to keep his nose up higher and kind of stretching. So we get a nice stretch of the, the intercostal muscles on that side. And you'll actually see it, it engages this side a little bit and lifts the back over here. I know, I'm sorry, you get spooky about things like that. Hey, let's try that again, you're being so good. Okay, good boy. Wasn't keeping track of my counts there, but somewhere around there you wanna count till your 10 second mark there. And when you stretch like that, you're really kind of opening up those intercostals. Same when you stretch down to this one, you've really got, I'll show you on the other side, where you've got that stretch. Maybe we'll keep it this way. Sorry, kiddo, I know this is not our usual protocol. So you guys can see the other side of just how it really opens up the opposite side of your stretch. Good boy. So this one, you wanna kind of make sure when their heads are low and out like that, it, you're really getting a nice release of the, the neck muscles there and across the top line there and opening that rib ca cage on that side. Good boy. And then just watch if you can, if the camera can see it. This part here on the back, you're going to see it kind of lift up a little bit. Come on. Let's do it properly, kiddo. Don't leave me hanging here. Good boy. A little bit. He's being a little bit lazy resting this leg. He's getting a little cocky. <laughs> Show off, huh? Good boy, kiddo. Okay, and then what he's going to do, he knows I still have a bit of carrot. Good boy. And what he does, because he knows he's going to get his carrot stretches, he usually will like just take a couple of sips and then wait for the stretches and then before, if I, if I go to his legs, um, he'll then want to go have a drink first. I'm not sure if he'll do that today, seeing as he's already had a drink. Come on. Oh, no, we're good? Okay. So usually I do give them a bit of that pause to see if they do want to grab another drink. That's you know, really important to hydrate. And then this stretch, you want to make sure you pull the leg out directly in front of the horse. Talk you through that on the next one. And I would not recommend doing what I just did. And I'll tell you what I did and what you should do instead. Because I get a little bit complacent around Bucky, you know, which, um, you know, admittedly, we really shouldn't do. But I kind of know his moves a little bit. So I kind of end up doing things I shouldn't around horses. So when you lift the leg, you want to make sure you're pulling it out front. You don't want to pull on the tendon here and put pressure on there. So that's why I like to lift the leg here and then kind of cup it around the heel bulb. So you're extending that leg. If you do it here around the fetlock, this leg kind of still stays bent and you, you don't get that stretch. You'll see it kind of stretching out all the way along the back of the leg. So you can do around the heel bulb, just mind your fingers that they're not underneath the heel. Because if a horse isn't used to the stretch, sometimes they stomp down, they put all their weights on this foot, and then sometimes if you don't get your fingers out of the way, they're gonna be casualties. <laughs> and what I did on that leg is I put my fingers under the toe to really get that stretch. But I know Bucky, and Bucky knows the stretch, and I would definitely not recommend doing that if you're starting out or at all, really, if you want to keep your fingers. 
So just cup it underneath the pastern here. Make sure your fingers are in a safe spot at all times. When you're starting out, I'm going to just give him a break on that leg. When you're starting out with that stretch, I would do it low first. And you see how he stretches into it? You want that. You want him to open up and really stretch forward like that. If I start lifting this leg and I get to the point where you may not do it because he's quite um, flexible. I don't know. Am I in the way here? I'm good here. So what he does, what they'll do, good boy. So he's still stretching into it. If I get to a point where he's too tight, he'll start pulling back. There you go. And then you want to lower. So the moment you feel your horse rock back out of that stretch, it's too high. Lower it down. You're going to get the opposite effect. So soon, as long as they're still lie, laying into it, reaching forward, it's a good stretch. They start pulling back like that. That's not where you want it to go. Hey? Okay. Okay. Alrighty, Buxter, let's see the back. I'm gonna move him sideways so you guys don't have my butt in your face the whole time. Right forward. And there's two variations of how we do the hind leg. Oh, sorry, I know we don't usually do it this way. Hey. The one is going straight forward. So same thing with the front leg. Just always make sure when you're pulling it out, it's in a straight line to the back end, like through the horse. You don't want to pull out this way or this way because you could, um, you know, cause a little bit of damage or tension that you don't want to do. So just stay in that straight line here. So the one variation, can I have this leg? Is straight forward. So the goal is to visualize a line through the leg towards the front hoop. And that's kind of where you'll gently not pull, but guide the leg into that direction. And I cup it underneath the pastern. Don't interlock your fingers. Kiddo. Come on, let's stand square. Good. Okay. Do not interlock your fingers, because I've learned this the hard way. When you're sweaty and gooey and whatever, and the horse pulls back, you can't get your fingers unlocked, and they can pull. <laughs> pull you back with them, which is not a great place to be. So make sure you have one hand on top of the other. Are you being silly? Bucky, hey, stop it. Okay. Same thing, we hold these for 10 seconds. And then I usually put it down where he wants to leave it, like a little bit forward and kind of hang out and see if he wants to keep it there a bit. And when I'm ready to do the next leg, I just want him to square up first. So I don't want him to be unbalanced while I'm lifting a leg, because again, he won't be able to relax in the stretch. So the other variation, and we kind of just alternate from day to day, whatever comes up, is to do the opposite leg. Now this might take a little bit of time, as horses might not be used to you picking up the opposite leg. But now this line would be going through the hock towards the opposite front foot. And you just kind of guide that leg under there and just hang out. Just kind of see how far they'll let you take it. And some horses, especially with the back legs, they'll bounce it up a little bit. Just be patient. You can never force a stretch, otherwise it's not going to bring much relaxation. Good boy, kiddo. And that, ladies and gents and kids of all ages, is how we stretch. Hey, Buxter, what do you think? 